this goes by many names as, as per usual. And we're probably calling it after the wrong people. <laughs> we don't need to worry about that. Okay, so um, let's see, I can erase all this, yes. So we have graduated from tiling near linear arrays now to tiling partitions. So tile lambda by tiling its parts. And let's right, so and we're going to want notation for that, so we're going to let T script T lambda be the set of such tilings. But we're only tiling horizontally. In this particular case, we're only tiling horizontally. But in a second, I'm going to be writing the parts vertically, and then I'll be tiling vertically. But yes, you only do one of the two directions. And it's whichever the ones you consider the parts. But not both. But not both. Exactly. And we're also going to need one other set, which I'll call D lambda. And so that's going to be the subset of T lambda, where each part starts with a dominant. Okay, so that's why I'm using D, D for dominant. So for example, here, what's one of the ways we could tile it? Well, say something like this, right? In this case, no vertical dominant. If I wanted to look at D lambda, then I would have to begin each row with a domino. Notice that doesn't leave me very much choice in this particular partition. <laughs> you have to put a mono over there. So that's not just a tiling in D lambda, that's all D lambda. You weight these in exactly the way you would before, right? As to the number of monominoes, t to the number of dominoes. And then there's one last set of definitions. So we say that partition lambda fits in an m by n rectangle. And we're going to write that as lambda is subset or equal to the n by n rectangle. If geometrically the number of rows of lambda, and when I say that I mean the number of rows of its Ferris diagram, of course, is less than or equal to the first dimension m, and the number of columns And again, geometrically, that just means that if I were to draw the Ferris diagram of that rectangle, lambda would conveniently sit in the upper left-hand corner. So, that's an example. This partition fits in many rectangles, in particular it fits inside the 3 by 4 rectangle because, think about it, here's my 3 by 4 rectangle, and I can find the partition sitting right here. Right, so everything above the, the dark, oh why even a colored chalk, why not use it? <laughs> everything above the pink line, here's my lambda sitting inside there. Now in this case, the nice thing about this is that we not, now have not just one partition, but two. So in this case, the complement of lambda I'll call lambda star, say lambda 1 star, up to lambda t star. Now this is going to depend upon the rectangle you put it in, but you'll always know what size rectangle I'm putting things in, so that won't be a problem. Where a lambda j star 
are the columns, column lengths of the complement, the rectangle with lambda removed. So right lambda star is above this little line that I put in, and then lambda star is below. So let's lambda star for that particular rectangle. 3, 2, right? Because we've got three things up this column and two things up that column. Okay, everybody com comfortable with what, what the complement means? Okay, now we're done. We have all the definitions. We just need to save this theorem. So this guy is equal to the sum of ways of tilings, actually pairs of tilings, and you sum this over all lambda contained in my n by n rectangle. So the m and the n here tell you how big to make the rectangle to start with. And then you look at all possible ways to fit a partition inside that rectangle. And for each of those, you take a pair of tilings where t, the tiling t, is just an ordinary tiling of lambda and T star is a, one of these D-type tilings of lambda star. So above the diagonal, you have an ordinary row tiling. Below the diagonal, you have a tiling vertically where every row, or sorry, every column starts with a domino. So a typical, right, what's a typical T, T star here? Right, I could take any tiling I like upstairs. Downstairs, I must start each column with a domino, and then in this case, I don't have a choice. I have to put them in open up there. But in general, there will be lots of choices for what you do outside. So that's what these guys counted. Is the yes question? What if you can't fit a domino into one? Excellent. Somebody who's, who's I had to get them. Yes. What happens if you've got a column of length one? You can't start that with a domino, and in that case, this set is zero, is empty. So those those guys you just ignore. That's weight one. No, weight zero. That's weight so it cancels out the multiplication. What? No, no, it cancels no, it's out empty. because it's, 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 it's empty. empty. It's, it's the empty set. Oh, the weight of the t star. There is no t. There is the the, oh. the, the set of things here is empty. If you sum, a sum over the empty set is zero. <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> right, right, right. It's not a. You know. So if if if, it, were, if, it, if, it can, if we had a single element, in it, which was the empty set comma the empty set, that would be different. But I, no, I'm saying act, this actual guy is empty. <laughs> so you, you, so those, those those guys don't contribute at all. I just get it for it. Yes, yeah, that's this is really simple. And the proof, as I said is so easy that you could probably do it yourself and just convince you of that. But so why do you know I just did you? <laughs> exactly. It's one of those things that once you see it, it's really but you have to know it. You have to know it. You have to come up with it somehow. Okay, so let me prove it for you. Again, the same technique we keep coming back to. We have something on the left hand side defined by you right, you have boundary conditions for these guys, the, the sides of the triangle. And then the recurrence and the the question is, can you show that the right-hand side satisfies the same recurrence? So I claim the sum satisfies the recursion for m plus n choose m. Why? Well, again, it's one picture proof. What is this? Right. So we're looking at all lambda sitting inside my and we've got t lambda together with t lambda star. How can we decompose that into two pieces? Well, it's the standard way when you've got this kind of setup. First of all, you look at the pairs where lambda goes all the way across the first row. Okay. So these are the ones where 
the very first part of Lambda is the